Martin here and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to be giving you a quick overview of Learn to Code. So I'm going to go over what it is, how you can get it, take a look at the interface and then show you how to get started. So let's jump into the video. Before we start you will need um, Playgrounds. Um, if you're not sure of what Playgrounds is or how to access Learn to Code then please I'll link my previous video down below which just goes through Swift Playgrounds and actually gets you to the point that I have on the screen at the moment. So what is Learn to Code? Well Learn to Code is an interactive course. Uh, it was created by Apple uh, uh, within the Swift uh, Playgrounds interface and it's designed to teach Swift programming language. It does this with structured lessons uh, and challenges uh, and has quite a bright uh, interactive uh, environment. So once you've got Swift Playgrounds, how do you actually access Learn to Code? Well, um, once you've got Playgrounds installed, you'll have this screen here, which will be blank. Um, you can see at the bottom that we have uh, more Playgrounds. Okay, it may just say Playgrounds on yours. Um, if we hit See All, then we essentially go to the kind of the playground store if you like and there are actually three different learn to codes that you can do so you start with one and then work your way up to two so you've got to do is click on git and then that will add it to your playground library here so let's go ahead and open up learn to code dependent on the Mac that you have it can sometimes take a little bit of time to load up so uh, just a little bit of patience there. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at it. So you'll find at the start of the different modules that you essentially have a little bit of an introduction to the topic. So kind of like a PowerPoint slide, we go through, read the information, which essentially explains to us a little bit about Learn to Code and what we're trying to do. So go ahead and hit start coding and let's start off by taking a look at the interface here. So on the top left is your explanation and instructions. So you'll find details about the concept being taught and then instructions on what you need to complete to move on to the next step. So in my opinion this is probably the most important section and it's really important to read everything that is provided in this instructional part. Most issues I found that you may run into is because we've maybe missed some of the information in here. So as you progress through the course, keep reminding yourself to read through the information on here. The bottom left is where you actually type out your code. Um, and then over on the right hand side, you'll see our puzzle world. If I click and hold, I can actually rotate around uh, and see the puzzle and challenge from different angles, which becomes very useful later on. You also see some buttons at the bottom. So there's a hint. Okay, so if you're feeling stuck, you can click and get a hint. Run my code, which will run any code I've entered over here on the left-hand side. And there's also what looks kind of like a speedometer. Um, and what that actually does is allow you to run your code faster or slower. I'll explain where that may be useful uh, in a second. So how does it work? We know what the interface looks like, we know where all the information is, but how does it actually work? Well, essentially what you need to do is three things. One, read the instructions in the top left. Two, try and actually complete the challenge that's been set out for you and then three run your code and see if you've completed the challenge so let's actually do that so in this first challenge it says your character bite loves to collect gems but can't do it alone in this first puzzle you'll need to write swift commands to move bite across the puzzle world to collect a gem so one look for the gem in the puzzle world okay we can see our red gem over here Enter the correct combination of move forward and collect gem commands. So if I go over and take a look at my puzzle world, I can see, well, he needs to move forward one, two, looks like three. So what I'm going to do is down here, right at the bottom, it's got 
two options, move forward or collect gem. I'm going to click move forward, and I, I already said that I think you need to move forward three times. So I'm going to add move forward three times, and then I think he'll be able to collect the gem. So now I go to the last instruction, which is press run my code. So I hit run my code, and then you can see Byte start to carry out the code that I entered on the left. Once that challenge is complete, you get a message telling me, essentially, congratulations, you're amazing, and then you can move over to the next page. So that is learn to code in a nutshell. So what they've done on the next one is they then add in another element. And this is kind of a theme in learn to code. It will teach you something, then it'll add in an extra little bit of code, okay, or maybe an extra challenge in the puzzle world. So we'll go through one more. And it says this puzzle is just like the last one, but this time Byte needs to turn left to reach the gem. You can use the commands from the previous puzzle as well as the new command turn left. So if I take a look at this puzzle world again, I can see one, two, so he definitely needs to move forward twice. So let's add two of those. Then he hits this wall. So that's where he's going to need to turn left. And I think then another two move forwards. And he should be able to collect the gem. Um, I showed you this speedometer before. So again, with this, if I go run fastest, if I'm like, yeah, I know that that's right. I just want to get through it nice and quick then it runs through my code really, really quickly. So maybe for some of these easier ones, that's really useful. The other thing that you can actually do is when you hit that is go one thing that's really useful. If you've created your program, something's not going wrong, you're not sure where the error in your code is, it goes step through. So what they'll do is run your code, but it'll actually highlight on the left-hand side what line Byte is actually reading and completing. So if you get an error, you can go, ah, it's on that line. That's where my error may be. So that's it. A very brief overview of Learn to Code. I hope it's been useful and good luck whether you're going to learn this yourself. Uh, maybe you're a teacher and you're going to try and implement this with your students, which is a great, great thing to do. Um, I really hope that this video is useful for you. So I'll see you in the next video.